are in the boardroom of the community center. Um, we are all present except for Cash, who is on vacation. Sorry, I should know better than that. All right, uh, we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by our director, uh, Gary Morrison. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And everybody's standing. He's not here. He's not here. Uh, acknowledge the media is there. She is in the back, and of course we are being filmed live on uh, the M VTV. Uh, approval of the agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? I'd like to make a motion to amend. Uh, okay. What would you like to change? Since we're meeting late today and we're not going to have a meeting in 30 days. Um, I would like to make a motion that we take the items under new business that will be 11, 11 uh, and anything that requires a postponement for 30 day notification, that we move those to our next regularly scheduled board meeting. That would be A, B, C, D? Yeah, but... Uh Yes. Before we get into that, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to talk to you beforehand, I counted, and there's not 30 days between the November and the December meeting. There's only 29. Okay. So if we don't do the first reading on these today, they cannot go into effect. I can't be have the second reading and vote until January. So I'll it's going to take I'll, us I'll on. rescind my motion. Okay. Thank you. And I'll move to approve. All right. And I'll second. Second, Maggie. Okay, let's look at the regular board meeting minutes. Oh, sorry, we have to vote to approve the agenda. <laughs> I was looking and didn't see a voting screen to approve the agenda. This approval of minutes. This approval of minutes. From the last meeting? No, this is for the uh, agenda. Uh, agenda. We Which had, <coughs> we had a, a motion and a second, but now we all need to vote to approve the agenda for this meeting. It's not on our screen. I know. You're still working on it. There we go. Please vote. Press yes. I need Director Armendariz. He's not on the, on the agenda screen. We'll record your vote manually. Okay. Just go ahead and record it for him. Are you a yes, sir? Are you an approval, sir? Uh, yes. Yeah. Sir. I'm in the right. All right. The, approve, the agenda is working. approved unanimously. <clears throat> okay. All right, now we get to the minutes of the last meeting, which was September 12th, 2017. Question. We've got only eight people here. How come we've got nine votes? I, I didn't know if um, Reza. Reza was going to be here or not. Should I remove him? He's not, he's not here. Let's see if he comes in late. Okay. But so Andre, I, because he's gone and Cash is gone, I'm voting. Yes. So that That's my privilege. Pass. If I want to vote, I will. Right. Uh, yeah, but we only have eight votes, we have and it shows nine votes there. One, two, three, one vote, two, one. There's nine. We have nine. No, two, one, four, two, two, three, four, okay, five, okay, six, okay. seven, eight, nine. All right, we have nine people. All right, are there any additions or corrections to the September 12th minutes? <clears throat> yes, I have several. I could be wrong, but... Um, all right, did you... You have a request to speak? His is all off. Okay, all right, I'll call on... on uh, well. Uh, his, his screen doesn't work. Yeah, my screen is not work. Okay. Well, if um, you would come in for training, it would have. <laughs> my uh, 
questions or corrections have to do with the um, various resolutions regarding uh, manner alterations. And they all seem to have some of the same uh, items that aren't right. Uh, you passed a resolution, uh, I think, a meeting ago where you required a 10% deposit for alterations. And what number and, are you looking at in the Okay, minutes? let's look at uh, page uh, 5 of 45. Okay. 5A. Yeah. Agenda item 5A. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Got it. 5 of 45. Got it. Yeah. Line okay. or paragraph. Page, okay, page 6 on the back side. Not 5. Yeah. Right. Pa okay. Page six. Page These six. are on the agenda, and so this is not the time to discuss it. And you were not at that meeting or at the committee meeting. I know, but there's meeting. a bunch of errors in here. I mean, I reviewed these. There's a new director. Anyway, it, back here it says uh, such fines left unpaid will result in forfeiture of a portion of the conference deposit required above. There's no clause above, including that conference deposit requirement, and that's throughout all these. Thank you, but you were not present at the meeting. Can I tell you about any corrections that should be made about these? Uh, this is, no. These are minutes of a meeting that you were not part of. Okay. We'll make. You uh, can abstain. You can, you can let us know and we'll make sure that those are corrected in the future. Okay. Yes, they can abstain. Because There's a big one back here about reserves. Okay. Just give us the Figure. list afterwards okay. if you think All it's right. a misprint or a mistake. Thank you. All right, uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? Maggie? Second. Second. Don? Uh, can we uh, <coughs> vote? Uh, motion by Maggie, seconded by Don. Uh, can we have voting screens, please? Director English, Director Bestana, and Director Armanderas. I abstain. abstain. You abstain. Okay, uh, my apologies. No. I voted no okay. unless these corrections are made. Yes. But you weren't at the meeting, so we need to show you as an abstain, sir. And then I will also show uh, Director Bestana as an abstain as well. He has to abstain because he wasn't at the meeting. No, but he isn't here. Yes, he is. Yes, he, he is. He just came in. Yeah. He was a little late. He came in. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, report of the chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a special meeting to do some business because at our annual meeting that we had earlier this month, we did not do any business. There are items that, because they require 30 day notification, if we do not take care of at this meeting will not get done because there's only 29 days between November's and December's meeting. So uh, we've run up against that three or four times this year where things have had to be pushed out two to three months uh, because of the timing of the meeting. So that's why we're having it. We're going to try to get through as fast as we can. Um, on the new business items, they will be the first reading and we will read them. We will not do a lot of discussion on them. They go out for 30 day notice to the members and discussion will take place at the uh, um, December meeting when we actually vote on them. And I think that's all I have for chair's remarks. We'll now have our open forum for members who wish to speak. Hopefully you have turned in a sheet to Lori and uh, you can tell me who needs, wants to speak or you can call them up. First of all, we have Jim Thorpe and then we have Mary Stone. Okay. Jim, would you come up to the lectern? Jim Thorpe, 140B. I want to mention today are, are kind of triggered by what happened in Santa Rosa 
I hope Chief Moy last year shared with you about the fire that started over near the wall on Paseo de Valencia, and our fire people put it out quickly before too much came across, and those of us locally had to put it out. Um, that situation is there again, and uh, cleaning out doesn't take care of the big piles of leaves and the tall trees that are full of, of leaves. So you have a fire thing just waiting, and we were fortunate we didn't get the Santa Ana's really blowing through here. Um, I have also mentioned that uh, uh, I have a weird subcontractor policy. Uh, the, uh, on October 9th, somebody came to put in a screen, a subcontractor for uh, GRF or whoever, uh, and they were told they couldn't come into the, the community because it was a holiday. But it was their, it was their subcontractor, and, that's, and they have to go back and reschedule it, and all that seems kind of a waste. I, I think that's kind of foolish. Um, I know these are sometimes at other levels, but you're the only people we have who represent us uh, here in United. Uh, the other thing is what I consider to be design neglect. I have two pieces of uh, land near me, uh, one where the grass was taken out and nothing has ever been planted uh, in 80% of it for the last two years. That's before the present management. Uh, another piece that was killed by a subcontractor, I guess, putting in concrete, and it's not their job, of course, to take care of the things that they destroy. I've talked to Mike, I guess, who's the top man, three times. He tells me he doesn't have the staff to do it. But I'd be very happy to show it to you if you want to. And I know I call it design neglect because I face back away from anything that people drive by. I know we take care of the things that look good for realty purposes and all. But people who are away out of sight are not getting service. And somehow the boards that you elect and the boards that we don't know anything about up there need to start taking care of everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Mary? Mary Stone, 356C. Um, uh, I'm... Um, Wait, 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 she needs to reset needs the clock. to reset me, okay. <clears throat> you got 26 seconds, Mary, go. <laughs> I could almost do it in 26 okay, seconds. Sorry, almost. Uh, I'm looking at the amendment to the trust agreement that was recorded on October 13, 1971. And uh, in the, uh, I guess you would call it section... Three under terms, and the last little bit that I would like to read is the use of any facilities by persons other than the cooperatives or members of the cooperatives shall be subject to prior written consent of the cooperatives exercising two-thirds of the voting power of Golden Rain as provided in the bylaws of Golden Rain. To my knowledge, no such vote has ever been taken so that the use of any GRF facilities, any GRF trust facilities, is not open to any non-members in accordance with the trust. So if there is a, a vote somewhere, the two-thirds vote of the corporate members, I would like to be aware of it, or we need to get that vote in order to let non-members use the facilities, non-members being anybody who is a guest or a lessee or sub -lessee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> anybody else? Dick Rader. Uh, a number of people uh, either came to me or I saw on the internet that they were concerned because on Columbus Day they had vendors come in. And they were turned away because uh, I guess it was considered a holiday here in BMS. Um, I would encourage uh, the board to, uh, whenever we have a holiday like that, it's not, it's not like July 4th where everybody takes off. When we have a holiday like that, that you publicize uh, to the community. Oh, thank you. That you publicize to the community 
that uh, vendors would not be allowed in on that day. I think that would help. As a matter of fact, I will tell you anecdotally that I uh, was speaking to another member of a board, and they were completely unaware that uh, Columbus Day you wouldn't allow vendors in. So even board members may not be aware of that. We weren't. All right, do we have any other member comments? That's all, Madam Chair. Okay. <clears throat> do I have any uh, responses, Pat? Uh, yes, I'd like to respond to Dick and say you're right. I know of at least one director of DRF who didn't know that it was going to be closed on Monday. Oh, it is. Never mind. Okay. Thank you. Maggie? Yes. Um, Mr. Thorpe, I will check and see if that is either a compliance or a landscape issue, and we'll see. Um, do you have the numbers of the units or the yards that are out or that have not been planted? It's, it's 140 on the surrounding areas. Okay. Okay. Is, is 140 a separate building? No. Are they separate buildings or are they? It's a built fourplex. It's a fourplex. Okay. So it's all those. In the 140 plex? No, it's also across. Across. OK. All right. It might be a compliance issue, and it might be a landscape issue, and it might be an inheritance issue where something is in the court. Who knows? But we'll check into it. Thank you. Do I have any other comments from the board, Don? Yeah, Jim Thorpe, you mentioned a this gentleman who had a vendor who couldn't come in to Repair a screen door or something. Deliver it. Yeah, we uh, we do screen doors here through our uh, our own people. No, that's right. Unless it's an alteration. We booked it, approved. Yeah. It's our subcontractor. And it's our subcontractor. Mm -hmm. Okay, huh? thank you. Wow. That's all I had. Yes, I know. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Thank you. We'll certainly look into it, and that's a. Uh, Something we need to think about for all holidays when the community center is closed. Okay, are there any other comments from directors? I'm sorry, Steve, I'm not getting a screen with requests to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, in, in regards to the uh, contractors on holidays, um, I think it would be pretty safe to assume that if it's a federal holiday and the banks and the post office are closed, so that might be a good guide for the residents to pay attention to, and I'm sure VMS staff will endeavor to get more information out through the village breeze from this point out. I've, uh, I saw a similar concern uh, on the internet, uh, and if there's an emergency situation, for example, where a plumber was required, not necessarily for us in United because we still rely upon staff, but you know, in another mutual like third, I think uh, there has to be some flexibility to allow emergency contractors to be able to get into service things like plumbing and stuff like that. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay, thank you, uh, and thank you for bringing this to our attention, Mr. Thorpe, because. Uh, the subcontractor and the appointment was made by our resident services, and so uh, they should have been there. And we apologize that you had to stay home all day, and that they were not let in. So we'll we'll work on that. And <clears throat> uh, Maggie is the chair of our landscape committee, and she will uh, look and see with your landscape issue. Mary. You always bring up some wonderful things. <laughs> we need to look into this. Uh, we do have a corporate members meeting coming up next month. Thank you. And so perhaps we need to make sure that that gets on the agenda. OK. All right. Uh, we've had seven and eight. Let's go to the consent calendar. Now on the con yes, Lori. I'm sorry, Lori. Uh, Madam Chair, because you're voting, you don't have the speakers list. Uh, it's either or. Unfortunately, that's something Chuck has to look into. So if people need to want to speak, they need to raise their hands. Need, okay. If you want to speak, please raise your hand. Usually, I have it on my screen, but that's not going to work this time. All right. Pat. On the consent, Pat. Sorry. 
Um, I move that we accept the consent calendar, sections 9A, architectural control, 9B, landscape committee recommendations, and 9C, finance committee rec recommendations. All right. It's motion by Pat, seconded by Janie. If we can have, is there any discussion? Can we have a voting screen, please? President Ready. Skillman and Director Armanderas. Sorry, fine. Didn't want to take. Yes. Ah, it did take. All right, uh, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, <clears throat> on to um, Section 10, which is the main reason that we are here today. Unfinished business. Um, <clears throat> The first one is 10A, a motion to suspend cable internet in the event of disciplinary action. This has completed the 30-day notice. So uh, Maggie, would you read that resolution for us, please? Resolution 0117XX, deactivation of cable service at a delinquent member or shareholders unit. Whereas in United Laguna Woods Mutual, whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual desires to strengthen the delinquency collection procedures, and whereas the collection and lien enforcement policy and procedures for assessment delinquencies stated, until the shareholder has paid all amounts due, including delinquent assessments, late charges, interest and fees and costs of collections, including attorney's fees, the boards of the directors may suspend the shareholders' right to vote and suspend the shareholders' right to use United's recreational facilities and or the facilities or services provided by the Golden Rain Foundation of Lagoon Woods after providing the shareholder with a duly noticed hearing pursuant to Civil Code Section 5855 and whereas the GRF board previously adopted Resolution 90-1509, which authorizes GRF at the request of the mutual to take disciplinary or suspension action against a mutual member, which includes, but is not limited to, the suspension of the mutual member's right to use the cable TV system and whereas on February 14, 2017, United Board of Directors approved deactivation of cable service at the delinquent members unit when an assessment amount is 60 days or more past due, and after providing the member with an opportunity to be heard, except when a member's payment plan is approved by the board and remains current. And whereas on September 5, 2017, the GRF Board adopted Resolution 9017XX, resolving that the GRF Board of Directors and the Board of Directors for each of the mutuals, including United, each possess the power to take disciplinary action against their respective mutual members, including but not limited to the suspension of cable television and internet services. Now, therefore, be it resolved October 17, 2017, that the United Board of Directors may suspend cable television and internet services provided by the Golden Rain Foundation of Lagoon Woods after providing the mutual member with a duly noticed hearing pursuant to Civil Code Section 5855 and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. Uh, 30 days notification to comply with Civil Code 4360 has been satisfied. I so move. All right, it's been moved. Do I have a second for this resolution? I'll second it. All right, Pat. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to vote.
President Skillman, please. I tried. See, my screen's not used to doing this. <laughs> yes. Okay, the motion passes. <clears throat> I should have said this before, but let me remind everybody to turn off their cell phones. I heard the whistle that told me I had a text, so I had not turned mine off. I just did, so I'll remind all the rest of you, please make sure that your phone is turned off during the meeting. All right, the motion passes. And we'll go to B. Entertain a motion to approve golf cart parking policies and procedures. <clears throat> Madam Secretary. Resolution 0117XX, golf cart policy and procedures. Whereas the corporation assesses a $50 fine for vehicles that use the common electricity without a permit. And whereas cords, plugs, and charging devices running through the property create a trip hazard and cause the property to otherwise be in an unsafe condition, and whereas the safety risk associated with this conduct expose the corporation to a risk of liability and expose any persons present on the property to risk of personal injury. And now, therefore, be it resolved October 17, 2017, in the interest of safety, Unattended extension cords may not be used in the United for any purpose. And now, therefore, be it resolved, all golf cart battery chargers must be elevated a minimum of six inches from the floor. And now, therefore, be it resolved, in the interest of safety, residents found with unattended extension cords and or golf cart chargers that are not a minimum of six inches of the about, above the floor will be subject to fines, and now therefore be it resolved, fines for violations of unattended extension cords and battery chargers are as follows. First offense, $50. Second offense, $100. Each subsequent offense, $150. Now therefore be it resolved, October 17, 2017, that the corporation staff is authorized to take action to enforce this resolution by citing occupants and or their guests and unplug any be electric vehicles found in violation. Be it therefore resolved that the officers, directors, and agents of this corporation <coughs> are authorized to carry out this resolution. The September is the initial notification 30 days to comply with Civil Code 4360 has been satisfied. I so move. Second. A second by Gary. It's been moved by Maggie and seconded by Gary. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Start over here. Andre. Uh, I have to apologize. I didn't keep updated to this issue here. Why is the charging device uh, six inches from the floor? The first question is, uh, second question is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth paragraph: uh, resident found with unattended extension cords, uh, not minimum of six inches above the floor, will be subject to fines. Um, I'm a little bit confused. How do we enforce that? The first question is charges. Why this charges must elevate a minimum of six inches from the floor? It's a safety issue in case there's rain or any kind of water. Uh, Maggie? It is a city code. Yes. We are in compliance with the city code by passing this. OK. As okay. for the uh, extension cords, you may use an extension cord as long as you are present. But for plugging in a golf cart like overnight on an extension cord, no. You may have your golf cart cord itself, which is attached firmly at, at permanently to the golf cart. You can have that elongated. There are different cords they can attach to your golf cart all the time. So you will not need an extension cord, but it is the unpluggable and pluggable extension cord. So that the fear of spark and, and safety is, is the question. 
So even if uh, this golf cart is uh, adjacent to the wall, there's nobody passing through that area. They still have to elevate it six inches above the floor. Uh, this the 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 charger charger the cart. must not be on the pavement. Must not be yeah, on I'm the ground. About, it has I'm to be about six the... inches elevated. Only the charger has to be elevated, not the cord. And not the okay. golf cart. And not the golf cart. Uh, okay, so unattended uh, extension cord. Uh, and or golf cart chargers that are not a minimum of six inches. So the minimum of six inches goes with the and or golf cart chargers. Charger. See ya. Okay. Okay, I don't have any uh, golf cart. So the char golf cart charger is a separate it's unit. It's a separate thing, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I understand. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair. <coughs> yes, Steve. Um, <clears throat> I have a number of concerns with this resolution. The first of which is the first sentence that states the corporation assesses a $50 fine for vehicles. The title of this resolution is Golf Cart Policy and Procedures. And I would recommend and request that we change the word vehicles to golf carts. In the fourth paragraph, the first now, therefore, it is resolved, uh, be it resolved, uh, states unex unattended extension cords cannot be used and united for any purpose. We're talking about in the common area here, what happens inside individual units right. Right. is different, and I think we should clarify that. We're primarily talking about carports. I right. understand, but... The, the resolution. We have no way of knowing inside. Right, so I, I would recommend that we specify it's, that this is ex unattended extension cords may not be used in the common area of United for any okay. purpose. Okay. Um, my third is right above the three dots for the fine structure. Um, it reads, now therefore be it resolved, fines for violations of unattended extension cords and battery chargers. It's not specifying that the battery chargers aren't elevated. Okay, so, so we can say non-elevated? Correct. Okay. And I, I hate to be picky about this, but I know that there will be other things coming down the pipe in this regard, so rather than having to go back and revisit this for a modification. Uh, the final is at the last, now therefore be it resolved. Um, staff is authorized to take action to enforce the resolution by citing occupants and or their guests and unplug any electric vehicles found in violation. Again, this is pertinent to golf carts, so I would Request that we change electric vehicles to golf carts, as this is a golf cart policy. Okay. Now these are are non-substantial, um, not exactly clerical errors, but I don't. They do not change what we were trying to do in this motion. So I think we can vote on it, and it does not have to go out for another 30 days. With those corrections, are there any other comments or corrections to the policy? We do have a request to speak. Not on my screen. Okay, who wants to speak? Mary Stone. Oh, oh okay. <clears throat> Mary Stone, I too, like Steve, uh, noticed it says golf cart policy, and I was wondering if possibly you wanted to uh, say use of the common electricity policies and procedures because it also kind of refers to anything that's kind of plugged in or using the common area. Well, this, this goes along with all of our golf cart. I think we'll take these one at a time. We're going to have separate things when we talk about electric cars. Uh, so I think we should leave it as it is. Any other comments? All right, I have a motion by Maggie. Hold on, seconded. hold on. I, have a, I thought yes. I put a request. <clears throat> uh, this, yes, this is a golf cart policy. 
and uh, India is talking about electrical vehicle, electric vehicle. So it could be misleading that people thought it's electrical vehicle, and now it's switched back to golf cart. So I would like to clear this message, the whole message again, and then make sure that uh, we are uh, we we express the message correctly and make sure that people understand this is nothing related to electrical vehicle. This is only related to golf cart. And also, I have a question about an unintended extension cords in common area. Uh, Point of order? Yeah, I understand that it's a safety issue, okay. But uh, in order to charge overnight, it has to be unattended. Okay, nobody's going to stay all night long and watch unattended uh, no, extension cords. No, cord. of course they're not. That's not okay. what it says. Okay, and also if it's assist, uh, the charger is required to be six inches uh, from the floor. This is a city code. Uh, isn't this supposed to be in one of the where uh, the city requires us, the city code, blah, 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 that kind of statement there? It's Otherwise, nice. we don't have any reason for that uh, charger. We didn't clearly specify why is charger uh, need to be six inches from the floor. <coughs> all right. We don't we should often. should have a free where us. Uh, to we don't state often that reason. cite the city code. That's but not necessary. in this case, uh, it seems like we are making a decision rather than we are following the city code. Uh, so that's what I'm, my concern is that we are we are not citing Thank this you. because city code. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's vote. All right. We let's vote. Like we, have, yeah. we have a motion. I'm to sorry. Vote. Who seconded? Gary. Right. We have a motion to approve and. It's seconded by Gary. Your voting screen should be coming up. Okay, um, Director <coughs> Bastani and Director Armendariz. I'm going to abstain. Okay, we have two abstentions, two no's, six in favor, so the motion passes. What, what is the statement of this motion, by the way? Golf cart policies and procedures. Uh, in there, there's a lot of electrical vehicle statements in there. Uh, Andre, there was, we made those corrections. We made wording <laughs> corrections, as Steve suggested. In every place Steve suggested, I so do we need a 30-day notification because of these changes? No, no we don't. We do no. not. Because they're only wording changes. Right. They're it not does substantive not change changes the of what we're supposed to do with this uh, resolution. All right, uh, Madam Secretary, would you read 10C, please? Uh, motion. I'll entertain a motion to approve the 2018 collection and lien enforcement policy. Resolution 117XX. 2018 collection and lien enforcement policy, whereas in accordance with California Civil Code, United Laguna Woods Mutual maintains a collection and lien enforcement policy that outlines the procedures, policies, and practices employed by the mutual in enforcing lien rights or other legal remedies for default in payment of assessments. And whereas legal counsel has reviewed the existing collection and lien enforcement policy and recommends some clarifying language, and the late charge is proposed to increase from a flat fee of $20 to $50 per month per delinquency, pursuant to Civil Code Section 5650B2, which allows the association to recover a late charge not exceeding 10% of the delinquent assessment. Now, therefore, be it resolved, October 17, 2017, that the Board of Directors hereby adopts the 2018 United Laguna Woods Mutual Collection and Lien Enforcement Policy as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and resolve further the policy statement is provided pursuant to the requirements of California Civil Code Section 5310A7 and will be distributed to members in November 2017 as part of the annual policy statement. 
Resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. September initial notification, the 30 days notification to comply with Civil Code 4360 has been satisfied. I so move this resolution. Do I have a second? John? Is there any discussion? All right, we're ready to vote. How may I record your vote, Dr. Arm uh, Director Armanderas? Yes. No. All right, it's nine to in favor and one against, and the motion passes. All right, 10D. Entertaining a motion to approve the amended financial qualification policy. Madam Secretary, would you read this resolution? Resolution 0117XX, financial qualifications policy, whereas it is in the best interest of the corporation to protect and preserve the financial integrity of the corporation, now, therefore, be it resolved, December 12, 2017, that the minimum financial requirements for membership are adopted per the United Laguna Woods Mutual Financial Qualifications Policy attached. Resolved further that staff is hereby directed to disseminate this information to the realty community serving Laguna Woods Village. And resolve further that resolution 01793, adopted August 8, 2017, is hereby superseded and canceled. And resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. October initial notification. Should the board endorse the proposed revision? Staff recommends that a motion be made and seconded to accept the resolution and allow discussion to ensure that the resolution reads to the satisfaction of the board. Staff then recommends that a board member postpones the resolution to the next available board meeting no less than 30 days from the postponement to comply with Civil Code 4360. That would be December. December. I so move this resolution. <clears throat> okay. uh, has everyone read it? I'll second it. All right. It's been moved by Maggie and seconded by Steve that we <clears throat> postpone this to our December meeting for final reading. Uh, is there any discussion? Andre? Yes, uh, looking at uh, agenda item number 10D. Page three of eight. Under discussion, the third bullet, prospective shareholders must submit from a recognized credit reporting agency a full credit report and a FICO score dated within 60 days of application. This will eliminate all the new immigrants coming to this society, even if they are becoming citizens. If they don't have a FICO score, they cannot buy any property here. Is that true? Yes and no. Number one, they cannot get into the community if they do not have um, a US bank account. They cannot use uh, monies from anywhere else in the world. That's to not qualify. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about FICO but, score. Uh, we have very few, this would be an exception. They can petition an, an exception if they do not have a FICO score. Most of them can get a, a credit report uh, from one of the major credit agencies. Uh, we've had a, three that I can think of that has happened in the last few months. Uh, they were all from Canada. And Canada does not have uh, FICO scores, but they were able to get credit reports. So if uh, immigrants, are moving in from another country and qualify financially, 
and ask for an exception to waive this, then it's the board's uh, right to do so. Uh, if it's optional, and why are we putting it on this uh, as a requirement and the wait for the petition? Because it's for most of the people. It's the general rule. The other would be an exception. Usually we'll... So do we have a clause in there that said, uh, without FICO score, a proper credit report will be suffice? No. No. We don't have that statement. No, oh. we don't. So, so there's a possibility that uh, immigrant, new immigrants, even after they become citizens, uh, they might be rejected because they don't have FICO score. You want to repeat Juanita again? It's a variance. They can appeal to have that waived, but for the general population, residents that are coming in, they do have, even if they're immigrants, they've been in the U.S. long enough to have a credit report and a FICO score. If you have a credit report, you're going to have a FICO score. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll see what, how it works. It's, my understanding is uh, I know quite a few new immigrants. They just moved here recently, they just become a citizen and they don't have any credit report. They've never worked here. Well, we're gonna look day. at their financial qualifications, which must I, be in US financial institutions. Yes, that, that I agree, that I agree, I understand that. Okay, well, okay. We, we will look and at that may, on a case by case basis. They may have annuities instead of uh, uh, incomes or tax returns. I know those are the alternative ways mm -hmm. to do it. Just this one, I don't know how to get around with uh, besides uh, petitioning. Uh, there's no automatic way to approve it or, or prove that they are eligible or no. not eligible. There's nothing automatic. This rule is a standard rule, and if they do not qualify with a FICO score, then they need to appeal. They are not even a resident. How do they appeal? No, well, in, they can ask for special consideration with their resale package. Okay, we'll, we'll see what... Uh, what happened there? I have no clue. As I say, we've had them. three of those in the last few months. Okay. Well, I didn't receive those. Uh, I didn't uh, sign up on those things. That's so why I don't remember. Okay. I don't know that. Uh, uh, Don, uh, you've had a... As far as, uh, as, far as uh, uh, the fourth bullet, guarantors may guarantee the financial obligation of only one membership. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the guarantor cannot guarantee his own parents and uh, his in-laws if he has sufficient fund. No, we have a, <clears throat> guarantors have to have a much larger amount yes. of funds. Yes. To, to do more than one, they would have to have double or triple that. And you can't um, have more than one, guarantee more than one unit on what a guarantor's financial requirements are. And it, uh, <clears throat> it's just a safety issue. We've had a problem in the past with uh, private lenders as guarantors for five, six, seven units, all on the same financial requirement of one guarantor. And something happens to that guarantor and we're left high and dry. So. Uh, the committee recommends that the guarantor only be allowed to guarantee one unit. But my concern is that these guarantors are not members. That's you're talking true. about you were talking no, about. No, I'm not talking about, talking about members. members. We have financial requirements for guarantors. Right. Ninety thousand dollars in income and two hundred and fifty right. dollars for uh, I assets. Understand, mm -hmm. I understand previously each Sales I'm, application is individually cons, uh, considered uh, not move related the question, to other. Please. Not the guarantor. Not the guarantor. Not the guarantor. Mm -hmm. not the guarantor. Mm -hmm. Right. So in this case, we're saying uh, guarantor. The question can only has been moved. We need a two thirds vote to stop discussion. If you wish discussion to stop, all those in favor of stopping the discussion and going to the vote, please signify by raising your hand. That fails, there is no two-thirds, so Andre may continue. Andre, 
Do you want us to abandon the financial qualifications policy, or do you want us to pass it without any of these requirements so that the, the committee has no protection, so United has no protection from anyone who moves in from outside anywhere? Or would you like us to have protection and the possibility of granting the rights to people to move in here? Well, you're given two choices, a protection or no protection. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about is there any alternative that can make it happen, but you know, will satisfy the uh, better situation. I'm not talking about a protection or non-protection. I'm talking about this sort of like a discrimination oh, yes. issue that uh, we just uh -huh. don't want immigrants. No, we this has nothing to do with to immigration. Do it has nothing to do with anybody. It's all of our residents, whether they move here from Kansas or Indonesia. But in they from can Indonesia, have one, they cannot. They can they guarantee can. one property only. No, I mean talking about number three. You know, that's, yes, that's yes. what. And this one, I understand fourth has nothing to do with the immigrant. Third has something to do with the immigrant. So you're talking safety issue, you know, that's the third uh, bullet. And that's not what I'm talking about, fourth uh, uh, issue. Okay. And I just concern that if, honestly, before I moved in here, I have more than enough to guarantee two parents. I just have, didn't have to, I needed to do that. That's what I'm looking at, say, do I? Now, suddenly, I cannot uh, uh, guarantee two parents, uh, two sets of parents here anymore. No. Andre, the, qual the discussion in committee was either no, they can guarantee only one membership, or they would have to qualify with another $90,000 and $250,000 in assets for each one that they guarantee. Oh, you couldn't I didn't see just that. Sorry. do it mm -hmm. once. Manuel wishes to speak. Yes, Manuel? Uh, yes, uh, in order for me to be able to be more informed on how I want to vote, would it be too much to ask you for you to just highlight the changes here versus what the policy was before this? Just Can you do that quickly? Or is that too much to ask? Uh, we'll do that in the future, Manuel, but I, we are not, we're not able to do that right now because it's not highlighted. I would have to go back and check and one so against the other. Okay. So I want to know. <clears throat> I'm talking about a vote. Don, you got a... Yeah, this, I think it's an excellent resolution. I'm going to support it. <clears throat> However, like I've mentioned the last two meetings, I'm really concerned about the $36,000 is all required. That's a poverty level. And with the assessments going up, we're going to have more people uh, will, who will have liens and so on. I would like to raise that. I know we're not going to do it right now, but I would certainly like to put that on the agenda. It is on future. the agenda for the Governing Docs Committee. It is. Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, Maggie? Thank you. There are four dots on number 11D, page 3 of 8. It says... Recommended, rec recommended amendments are as follows. Dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four. Okay, so it's in the staff report. So it is right there on the first page of the write-up. Okay. Pat? Yeah, with regard to Don's comment, I don't really agree with you because in the first place, Microphone, please. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. Oh, I had it on. In the first place, the majority of people that only have $36,000 in income will have qualified either through the bank or maybe they paid cash for it in any case. So we're, we're really not taking much of a risk. And it has been 36000 normally in any case. So I think we're best just to leave it as it is. All right, this will be discussed at uh, Governing Docs. Please feel free to come and express your was, opinion. Was there a motion to send it to committee? <coughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that's okay. for the, the raising right. the oh, I see. minimum. Okay. But we have a, ma a motion by Maggie, seconded by Steve, for item 10D. Uh, would you please vote? You don't have a voting screen?
Director Leonard, your vote. All right. Your vote, Director Leonard. Aye. Director Armanderas. No. No. And Director Bastana. It's on there. Bastani. He voted. Oh, okay. Abstain. To abstain. Okay. All right, the motion passes, 721. <clears throat> Let's look at uh, item number 11 on the agenda, new business. And I'll ask Maggie to do a first reading of the resolution uh, to approve a proposed fee schedule for manor alterations. Madam Secretary. This is the first reading. Uh, proposed variance process fee policy. Resolution 0117XXX, whereas variance requests require significant, significant staff time for proper processing, including research, report preparation, and then presentation to the appropriate committee and then the board, and whereas in order to offset administrative costs associated with processing variance requests, which is often followed by an appeal of the board's decision as mandated in accordance with resolution 0109101, and whereas the mutual currently charges a $100 fee to offset administrative costs associated with processing various requests, and whereas the board realizes the fee should be non-refundable, now therefore be it resolved, December 12, 2017, that in order to partially further offset administrative costs associated with processing variance requests, which is often followed by an appeal of the board's decision as mandated in accordance with resolution 0109101, the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby sets the variance request processing fee at $150 and resolve further that resolution 0116113 adopted December 13, 2016 is hereby superseded and canceled and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Right. <clears throat> the motion, motion has been made to um, move this resolution to conform to the 30-day notification requirement. Janie uh, Slankin, by chair. This is to move it to our December agenda. Is there any discussion? Yes, I'd like to comment on this. <clears throat> My experience is that this staff uh, spend a lot of time reviewing and over-reviewing a uh, thing and they're wasting time. Uh, as opposed, so I don't agree with increasing the price. We have to make sure that the staff are uh, efficient in doing their job. In one case, I know that six different people have reviewed one simple variation, which doesn't make sense. Either the staff don't know what they're reviewing or they don't have anything to do to have six people over and over reviewing the same thing. I, uh, so I, I would like to uh, uh, make that point. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? We do have a request to speak, Mary Stone. Okay, Mary. Oh, and me too, I punched my Oh, I'm twice. sorry, I, I don't get that screen. Thank you. Um, that's a tragedy. But it does take staff time to do a, a, an appeal. And it does take more staff time to do another appeal and to make an appearance before committees and so on. So there are certain cases which really should not happen and those are very difficult and we're very sorry when those happen. But the general variation takes $100, but it takes more than that because if it's a denial, it's almost always continued on to appeal. No, my experience is that staff don't have too much to do. So they go ahead reviewing I'm too sorry, many this things is, over and over again. This is not, and I'm sorry, this is 
This, so, so then you want to vote no on any policy that increases fees? No, no, increasing, no. I, I, won't. I would vote for if you want to check and make All right, we'll have further discussion at our December meeting when it comes up for a vote. All okay. we're doing now is moving it to our December meeting. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I take exception to our staff does not have enough to do. Mary. Mary. Psst. No, I'm sorry, I don't get those. Mary Stone. Yeah, Mary. How come my, my request got but, canceled? No, it's not canceled. I just don't get them on my screen right now. So, hmm. all right. I have Janie and Andre. I'm sorry, Mary. That's okay. Go ahead. I understand that <coughs> staff, when they reviewed our uh, fees for last year, that we were thirty-two thousand dollars plus in the red in that particular area of that department because of the time and because of the involvement that our staff has been with some of these questions that they're working on and trying to, you know, it's staff time. We're in the red. That's why one of the reasons that we are raising our fees. And, you know, I think, in my opinion, working with them, they're very efficient. Um, and I, I think, Riza, that Maybe some of the board members are not familiar with the whole workings of the department. I am familiar, but I am taking no, I mean, simple please. point of order. We'll just, <clears throat> okay, it's not an argument. Um, Andre, you wanted to speak. I think we'll probably need to uh, raise up, brought up a good point about efficiency and effectiveness. I think we probably need to look at the procedures rather than using the same procedure that costs uh, uh, a lot of uh, staff time. Maybe we need to review the procedures. Have we ever thought about that and see if we can improve the efficiency, reduce from six reviews to maybe two or three reviews? Okay. If we are unwilling to that, then we were consistently uh, asking for more money and throw money at an inefficient, ineffective way of doing business. I think it's our fiduciary responsibility uh, to understand why it's taking, costing so much money and uh, why is it uh, turned out to be a resident's responsibility to pay more for this uh, kind of an inefficient uh, uh, process. Thank you. Steve. VMS is charged to manage our affairs under contract. If you are dissatisfied with their service, and if you would like to find a different management company, that is your prerogative. Whether or not you're successful in that attempt, I couldn't say. However, I will say the following. Since my tenure as an advisor for over two years and a board member now for a year, I have seen continued situations where Fees have not been raised for very long periods of time and just sit. And if you read the staff report and you come prepared to these meetings, I believe you'll have a better understanding of the situation. So I'm not looking to have a conversation here, but I find trying to circumvent the meeting and going back to a committee board level and having directors speak out of turn without being acknowledged by the chair is disruptive to our business. Thank you. Mary, and then we'll go on. <clears throat> Mary Stone, 356E. I have a, a, a problem with the fee at $100 because there are such a thing as simple variances and more complex variances. You know, a simple variance. I have a white door now because of the recent change in the uh, paint palette. And my neighbor, who has a custom door, has a red door. Uh, and so we're side by side. It is a Seville model. So if I were to request to paint my door red, which I would have preferred in the first place and asked for, I have to pay $100, $100, $150 for the, to, to paint the door, which is more than it's going to cost me to paint the door. 
I think we need to kind of figure there's some things that are simple and some things that are complex when it comes to asking for a variance. Okay, you've made a good point. <clears throat> Is there another speaker? Barbara? Barbara Copley, 410. One second, one second, please. <laughs> We are allowed to charge what it actually costs to inspect these applications. And on any, any amount of work that our managing agent does for us, we can't charge more. So when you think of an application going in for a, an alteration or whatever, how many people are going to look at that? And it isn't a matter of efficiency. It's a matter of the different departments being involved. So this is a very little bit of $150. Is that three hours of work when they may put in 20 hours? So be reasonable and for heaven's sake, just pass this thing. Thank you. I'd like to, because of the questions that we've had from the board, yeah. <clears throat> I would like to say at our December meeting before we vote on this, uh, we will have staff in to explain why and how this fee is applicable. Can we now vote on uh, <clears throat> the motion made by Maggie and seconded by Janie to move this to our December meeting? I'm still stuck on Voice vote? I vote yes. President Skillman? Yes. Sorry, it's not taking. Director Armanderas? Yes. OK. Nine to one <clears throat> with no abstentions. They will be moved to our December agenda. <clears throat> okay, moving on to 11B. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, will you please read the resolution to approve the requirements of a conformance deposit for minor alterations? Proposed conformance deposit, resolution 0117XXX, whereas in order to partially offset mutual costs associated with contractors and residents performing alterations that have damaged mutual property, or violated mutual policies, such as illegally throwing away construction debris in mutual dumpsters, or not taking the proper protocol for regulated materials that word should be taking ING. And whereas the mutual currently does not require any conformance deposit fee capture, and whereas the mutual desires to enact a one-year pilot program beginning on January 1, 2018, to study the effectiveness of the conformance deposit. Whereas the fee will be required for all construction with a value of $500 or greater, and it be refundable, will be refundable, and be refundable, cross up the it, be refundable, given that the contractor or resident performing the alteration conforms at S to all mutual rules and standards. Now, therefore, be it resolved that November 14, 2017, in order to partially further offset mutual costs associated with contractors and residents performing alterations to their manner, the board of directors of this corporation hereby sets the conformance deposit fee at $250 and resolved further that Resolution 01 adopted September 12, 2017, is hereby superseded and canceled, and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I so move. <clears throat> Madam Secretary, would you change that to December, not November? Oh, thank you, December. 
All right, you move it. Do I have a second? I'll second. Steve? Aye. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we move to our uh, December agenda. Uh, approval of a requirement for a conformance deposit for minor alterations. Is there any discussion? I, I, yeah, I have a question. Um, in the microphone, please. In the prior minutes, sir. Uh, Can you turn your microphone, microphone. on? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. In, in the uh, minutes from the prior meeting, uh, it had a section in here on the uh, standard unit alteration conditions and the conformance deposit. In that, they talked about a 10 percent. Deposit is has that changed now, and this is the new requirement then in place of that. That was in the minutes. Yes, that's correct. That's yes. Right. This okay. Will take so this part won't be approved then in the prior minutes. <clears throat> well, it's, it was approved in the minutes because it was to, at that meeting. But if we vote this in it, December, it's okay. it correct. Okay. Thank change you. That. Yes. I did request to speak. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Um, I would like to know. Um, Microphone. Able... Sorry about that. Um, I don't understand the purpose of this. Could you give me a brief explanation, either Don or Steve, one of those two are probably most capable? We have our manager here. Is, he, is it okay if he speaks? Sure. Yeah. <coughs> what was your question? What Why are we purpose? asking for a conformance deposit? What is the purpose of the conformance deposit? We have had issues um, historically with contractors not um, keeping with our policies and regulations, such as using mutual dumpsters, damaging landscaping, illegally parking. This saves us from having to go through the reimbursement process, which costs more staff time to get this money back. This way, the costs, the tickets, the fines are re reimbursed immediately from the conformance deposit. Thank you. So we can get it right away. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. All right, I have a, <clears throat> a motion by, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Janie. I just wanted to add that there are times when someone will pull a permit and they forget to get the final inspection and this protects us also. All right, I have a motion by Maggie, seconded by Steve. Would you all please vote to move this to our December agenda? <laughs> Hold on, I have a request to speak for. I'm sorry, while. as I've told you, Andre, you need to raise your hand because I okay. did not get that screen. Okay, so I raised my hand. I didn't realize that. Sorry. Uh, so I want to. I want to make a. I want to check. Uh, ask a question about uh, for to Kurt. How do you enforce this? Uh, uh, checking them whether they damage mutual property, throwing away construction debris, and. Uh, taking proper protocols, I can understand that. You have procedures if you don't follow the procedure. But how do you verify they damage pro mutual properties and throwing away construction debris? Do you send people to check them every day? And even if you find it, how do you prove that it's this vendor that's doing that? Well, you bring up several issues. The throwing away of debris would require a witness. Require right. someone calling security and saying, I saw my neighbor right. putting trash in the dumpster. That's the only way we can prove that. Okay. As far as damages go, we do that on the final inspection. Part of this deposit is to guarantee a final inspection. So our inspector would go out when he sees damaged irrigation or damaged landscape, and then the bill would be put together to the landscape department. How do you know it's, uh, they said it's not, I didn't damage it. How do you respond to that? <clears throat> There's always that issue, but there's sometimes it's very obvious. What I've made some recommendations uh, uh, when I received this agenda. What I suggest that is that uh, during this uh, permit issue, we ask the uh, owner or whoever's requesting this permit to get two neighbors to sign and say, yes, we've noticed that. Uh, this request has been given, and we uh, will help out and check if there's anything uh, uh, this vendor is doing damage to our property. Okay. And uh, Andre, the, the neighbor uh, uh, awareness, et cetera, is a standard procedure? Right. Or any of these alterations, they, what is it, uh, within 150 feet? <laughs> right, and I did respond to you, Director Torg. So we have two different forms. When we have a standard alteration approval, our staff in a multi, multiple unit building, which all of United's are, 
our staff sends out a notice or posts a notice on a common area in that building to let people know that an alteration has been approved. And it's, I sent you a copy of it. It's very clear on there if you see violations of the dumpster, if you see smoking violations, if you see noise violations, please let us know through the course of the construction. That's the courtesy notice. The second notice is the neighborhood awareness notice. And what that, it, that goes out before it's approved, when it's a variation, and it invites people to make comment and come to the Architectural Control and Standards Committee to make their comments before it's approved by the ACSC and forwarded to the board for final approval. So we have both of those things in place that you asked for, and I did send you copies of both of them. I can send them to everybody if you'd like to see them. My question is, it's optional. So- No, it's not. <clears throat> that the neighbor's, neighbor's response, neighbor's uh, neighborhood watch is optional. And I've met uh, several uh, neighbors talking about there's a uh, debris dumping in the dumpster, and they didn't know what to do with that. And I've never received, maybe because my neighbors are just making minor uh, modification. So what I'm asking is, it, can we make it required and send it to the neighbors, and we ask the two or three neighbors have to sign it and say, yes, we, I'm aware of it now. And then at the end, we ask the neighbors say, yes, there is no violations. So in that case, we, uh, it's, it's That's much really more. big brother. <clears throat> This well, the whole thing is thing. big brother. The whole issue is big brother. Are you, are you moving an amendment to the motion? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm moving an amendment and say, can we add a clause and say the permit requires, uh, in there there's a clause that required uh, uh, two or three, depends on what we have, two or three neighbors to check mark and say, yes, we are aware of this going on, starting uh, at this point. And at the end, they say, yes, we've uh, that's, that's an awfully long amendment. All right, I have an amendment to uh, a motion to amend the conformance deposit uh, requirement to include neighbor, mandatory neighbor involvement. Uh, Informed. Yes. Well, yeah. that's more than involved if they have to sign off on it. Yeah, um, okay. That's only in the event of a violation, right? No, that's no. Uh, all no. of them. All of them. He what he's proposing is any time there's an alteration, we have to go through these steps. Any time they have this $500. Uh, is there a second to refundable. this? To this. Yeah. Is there a second to Is there a second to, to, to Andre's amendment? Seeing none, it fails. We go back to the original, and I have Gary, and then Don, and then Janie. If I heard Mr. Thorpe earlier, I think one of his complaints was exactly this, that a contractor damaged property adjacent to his unit. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what we're talking about here. Right. Don? I, I was just going to vote no on this, and it's been voted. Yeah. Okay, Janie. I, I just wanted to make a comment that if you want to do all of that, Andre, and think about it, then we're going to have to raise our fees even higher for more staff time. All right, I have a motion by Maggie, guess. seconded by Steve, uh, to move this to our the conformance deposit uh, uh, motion to our December meeting. Would you vote, please? Director Armendariz, your vote? Yes. Director Ng, oh, sorry. Okay, that's it. All right, I have uh, eight in favor, one no, and one abstain. So the motion passes. All right, C, <clears throat> a motion to approve a policy for handling and destruction of recordings for board and committee meetings. <clears throat> Would you read that motion, please, Madam Secretary? Uh, yes. Um, I'd like to interject a word here about okay. this. This is a taping assist for the secretary present. Okay, that's all. This is a, a secretary would like to be able to record the meeting on tape so that she can be sure that she has gotten the minutes correct. 
That is all this is. Thank you. Okay, resolution 0117XX, policy for handling and destruction of recordings for board and committee meetings. Whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual United contracts with Village Management Services, Inc. for management services pursuant to the terms of a management agreement, and whereas United's board holds regular board meetings during which minutes are taken in accordance with United's bylaws and the management agreement, whereas committees appointed by the board also hold meetings during which minutes are taken in accordance with United's bylaws and the management agreement, and whereas United desires to strengthen procedures with respect to documenting and maintaining meeting minutes, now therefore, be it resolved, December 12, 2017, United's Board of Directors of this corporation hereby establishes the following policy with respect to the handling and destruction of recordings from board and committee meetings. One, the recording secretary will cause the board and committee meetings to be audibly recorded to facilitate efficient and accurate taking of minutes. Two, the recording secretary will maintain custody and control of all such recordings. Three, all such recordings are not subject to inspection by members of United. Only the board and VMS staff will be provided access to such recordings. And four, all such recordings will be destroyed following the approval of the meeting minutes by the board and or committee in question. Resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? second. Jamie? It's been moved and seconded that we move this to our, we put it on 30 day notification and move this to our December agenda. Is there any discussion, Pat? Uh, yes, I'd like to add something to this. It used to be for many years that after a closed session that the recording person would take our closed session and destroy it. So there was no question of it getting into the wrong hands. We haven't been doing that recently, and I think we should be doing that. So I'd like to see that as part of the Right, that's the, you're talking about time. the paper copies, so that really isn't right. the recordings that we're doing here. Well, but that's a good point, be and I think we should. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Let's see if Lori has. <clears throat> Steve? This has to deal with audio recordings for the recording secretary's use. Yes. As Maggie informed us. Uh, in that regard, and the resolution itself, in the now therefore be it resolved, when we get to the third sentence, it says, to the handling and destru destruction of recordings, um, I would suggest that the word audio be inserted there, just as there's never any question that our board meetings, which are recorded on video, uh, aren't confused with that. And my other concern is in uh, number four, at the very end where it says all such recordings will be destroyed following the approval of the meeting minutes by the board and or committee in question. I think we should make it a board after the board has approved the minutes. Not, not to the dis discretion of a committee because if we have a committee meeting and a committee chair signs off on it, as we do, and then those recordings are destroyed, and then we get to the board meeting 21 or 51 days later, and there is some discrepancy, or we will not have the ability to be able to go back to that recording. But once the board approves the minutes, that would be- We, we don't usually approve the minutes of the committees. We do in the committee meetings. We do in the committee. The committee does, but the board doesn't usually. Yeah. Okay. Then, let, the then shall we strike board? No. 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 Because it's talking about it says both the board meetings and committee by meetings. By the board and or committee. Should probably just say or. 
That or might make it clearer. Board or committee. Okay. Okay. All right. Steve, Thank what you. was your first one? I'm sorry. Your first correction. Was audio um, recording. Add audio. Where? Into okay. recordings. <clears throat> Are there any? Yes, Andre. Right here. Do we ever make any committee meeting audio recording? Yes, that's what this will do. Where? And what we're going, what we're saying here is that we're going to do it at all the committee meetings. Now there are just some that they are recorded, but it's very okay. difficult for the recording secretary sometimes to go back. They're not televised. For board meetings, we can go back and look at the tape, but for committee meetings, we can't. Right. And <clears throat> they're writing first, and six people are talking, and whatever. And the audio recordings will help us to make sure that we have a, a so it, correct. So it will one. only happen here when we meet here, right? Or on the Sycamore and the Willow no, room? No, it will be in every, every committee, no matter what room they're in. OK, so we will have record, audio recording of, uh, during any of the uh, board and the committee meetings, and that's the purpose of uh, uh, destruction of audio. Correct. Uh, any duration. What we're saying that, is we're not going to keep them after Any duration, been how long they must be kept before we. Until destroy. they're approved. <laughs> Until they're approved. <clears throat> There's no fixed duration, say it has to be stay more than, say, uh, 364 days, 365 days. No, so absolutely anytime. not. Because it depends on the board or the a committee. And if they, uh, for instance, a board meeting is recorded and at the next meeting those minutes are approved, those recordings will be discar uh, discarded. If a committee meeting that only meets every two or three months, uh, it's recorded. Once the committee uh, at their next meeting accepts those, then, then it's away. So there's no standard. It depends on the, the meeting that it's recording. OK, thank you. No, I understand. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All right, I'd like to call for the vote. This is to move uh, the motion for policy for handling and destruction of recordings uh, as changed. I do have a question. Oh, Sorry. yes. Do we need this for open meetings? Yes. We do? Time it's, I have a secretary. All right. How closed? No, no, we're going to try to start it with everything because okay. we've, we've got a problem. Recording the minutes, particularly in committees where a lot of people are talking and the secretary's trying to take the notes and do the minutes, yeah, and she misses what somebody had to say. Mm -hmm. And right now we've got two or three people that are getting together and saying, did you hear this? What happened here? Who seconded this? Whatever. With the recording, we'll make sure that we have it all correctly. All right, I think we're ready to vote. Director Armendaris, your vote. Yes. All right, the motion passes 10 to 0. All right, <clears throat> let's look at 11D. I'll entertain a motion to approve revisions to the United Mutual Standard 31. This is windows and window attachments. Would you read that resolution, please, Madam Secretary? Resolution 0117XXX, revision of section 31, windows and window attachments. Whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual has established rules related to window modifications and installations through its alteration standards and standard plans, specifically section 31, windows and window attachments, and whereas approval of non-standard window modifications and installations have been handled through the variance request process, and whereas United Laguna Woods Mutual recognizes VMS manor alteration staff is qualified to determine whether a proposed alteration meets the architectural and aesthetic requirements for the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved on December 12, 2017, the Board of Directors of United Laguna Woods Mutual hereby revises Section 31, Windows and Window Attachments, Subsection 2.0, 
applications with the following <coughs> requirements. Two, one, retrofit windows shall be defined as those installations where the window, original window frame is not removed. 2.2, window modifications shall be defined as those installations which alter the width or height of an existing window. All window modifications shall comply with the requirements of this standard and the principles of standard plans. 2.3, new windows shall be defined as those installations that include installation of a new window in a location that did not previously contain a window. All new windows shall comply with the requirements of this standard and the principles of the standard plans. 2.4, window modifications and new windows shall not adversely affect the structural integrity or aesthetics of the manor or the surrounding manors. 2.5, top of window heights shall match those of existing windows on the same side of the building. 2.6, Size and location of windows shall be as per standard plans. 2.7, window frames must be white vinyl only. Window frames and glazing shall match existing windows in all aspects and shall comply with the requirements set forth in this standard. Resolve further, the member is required to comply with all of the contingency typically required for a mutual consent and resolve further the resolution 01-1608 adopted January 12, 2016 is hereby amended and resolve further the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of this corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. I'd like to say, uh, oh, a second, please. Okay, Gary. Uh, I'd like to say, especially to you, Ray, that this is a step in the direction that we are going to try to make standard some of the things, in this case, windows, that then will not have to do a variation and come to the alterations committee, et cetera. There are certain alterations that we think we can put in standard policy. This is the first one for windows that um, we hope to make it easier on our residents and on our staff. Uh, are there any other comments? Yes, Fraser. I have a question. <clears throat> on this standardization of window sizes, normally standardization is done to reduce the inventory. So that if they have to replace something, they, they reduce the inventory. And, but when there is a modification done uh, by alteration, then it's the responsibility of the owner to replace it. So why are we putting so stringent uh, requirement for window sizes, etc., uh, which takes a lot of staff time to go and look at this and and uh, write down reports, etc. Raise it. The motion is to make this a standard. So if they follow these. They don't have to get an alteration. If they don't, if they're putting in a different size window, if they're putting in something different, but we still have a majority of our units that have the original windows in them. And okay. so if we want to do something to those, this just says that staff has the ability to approve that as long as it follows these guidelines. Yeah, I agree with you. The ones that are there, uh, they should remain the same. I'm talking about the windows that are being altered. Well, then alteration. they would require an alteration vacancy, uh, variance. This only covers... Yeah, but they are required to have alteration permit equivalent to the same size windows. Not always. What, mm -hmm. Not always. Not always, but mostly. No. So we, I, we have I don't people who this... do alterations on alterations, and they change the size of the windows, <coughs> and they put in an extra one in that. And those would all be things that require a variance. I personally think this is a lot of waste of time to make what such a stringent Well, what we're trying uh, to do is to for... not waste time and make it easier on the residents and the staff by having a standard. Are there any other discussion? 
All right, I'd like to vote on this, please. It's been moved by Maggie and seconded by Gary. If you would all please vote. I lost my screen. I did too. I voted. You clicked twice. It went from the voting screen back to the agenda. No, no, no. Am I speaking to the party? No. There we go. Did you get yours back? No. I lost my screen. But I vote yes. Okay, it, it's not the colors that we've seen. It's just, it's a whole different thing. But over on the left, yeah. you see yes. Director Skillman? Oh, there it is. No, I still lost my screen. President Skillman? I'm trying. There we go. Well, no, it didn't. Mm -hmm. So how do you vote, Juanita? I vote yes. <coughs> so it's, it passes nine to one. All right, we're going to look at 11E, and I would like to make a comment before uh, Maggie reads this. Um, <clears throat> the recommendation is not um, the recommendation of Director Toring. It is because of the resignation of Director Toring that we are looking to disband the preparedness for disaster ad hoc committee. Um, both of the other directors who are on this committee have already resigned. There is nobody that I have been able to find who wants to continue this particular committee. Uh, the Disaster Preparedness Task Force uh, for the whole village has said they would absorb this, and so I would like to have this board disband it. In so doing, I think we need to give a real round of applause to Director Tarn, who has done a remarkable job with this committee in building back the captains, uh, which had kind of gone by the wayside. He has brought attention to it. Uh, there's now people out there who know what it's all about. He's been on TV a few times. He's really made uh, publicity do it. So I think as we turn this over to the Greater Disaster Preparedness Task Force, it's much better than when we started. Do I have, oh, you, yeah. there's not a resolution. So I just need a motion to disband the preparedness for disaster ad hoc committee. Pat? I move that we disband the disaster ad hoc committee and give Andre Tong a, a round of applause. Thank you. Do I have Thank a second? Thank you very much. I second, and I'd like to see the hat every now and then, too. Yeah, All right, it's been moved by <clears throat> Pat and seconded by Maggie that we disband the Preparedness for Disaster Ad Hoc Committee and um, fold it into the community's Greater Disaster Preparedness Task Force. Would you please vote? I have no screen. <laughs> All right, Don, how do you vote? Yes. Director Armanderas? I have Okay, we have nine to one with one extension, and it passes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is future agenda items. We have one. Uh, on the future agenda for December, and that's to entertain a motion to increase assessment late charges. Are there any other items that directors would like to have put on the uh, December, the November agenda? Excuse me, this is for November because it doesn't require 30 days to put it on. Andre? Well, I have two items. One of the items is uh, uh, that we, in our management agreement, there's a request that we have a um, work, resident work request report for, uh, for us to review, and at, at least a monthly level. So that's the one that we haven't received for 
since we established two years ago. So that's what we are, um, I want to see that kind of report. And I haven't seen you know, any documentation where the progress is. So, I'm so, so does this, this board does have a residency committee, correct? No. Advisory committee, yes. Advisory committee? Yes. So my recommendation is that it be given to that advisory committee and anybody else that wants it, but that it goes to the advisory committee before it would come to the board. Because we want to keep the names and, and manner numbers usually confidential. Privacy is a, a yeah. really big issue with this. Uh, but Andre, quite frankly, in November uh, or December, and I, I have to double check my dates there, I think it's November, uh, the board really needs to review the whole management agreement because we review it annually and it was last November. So we'll put that as an item on the agenda for November. And that would be closed session? That would be closed session. I, I have a question. Andre, did you really request a resident, resident advisory committee list? Uh, no. no, if you look at a management agreement, there is a specific okay, statement so, of the request. So that was, he, there is nothing it, it goes, about resident advisory no, it, it in, goes this, to in the his request. Document review. Yeah. Well, I have no problem uh, if uh, they get a preview of resident advisory report, uh, committee preview it and then, you know, make any corrections and adjustments and the, the recommendations. The, the, well, it would be the document review committee, not the resident advisory yeah, committee. Yeah, resident advisory is where we assist residents when they're having problems in the community. My apologies. So we'll set it for the govern, governing, governing documents, documents agenda. Right. Okay, okay. It, it is a not governed document, though. That is not a government document. It that is, is just a resident advisory. I, I think resident advisory initial suggestion is the resident, better one. Resident oh, on. let me, let advisory me, let me committee my... is not a committee of board members which deals with such matters. It is a committee. Resident advisory helps advise residents who are having trouble with their neighbors or trouble with barking dogs or people down the hall. So the resident advisory committee is not a committee you want. I don't know which committee would be more appropriate. You, you come to the resident advisory a lot. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. it's just people that come and, com and talk to us. Concerns. Concerns. Yeah. It's not something that we bring up anything like that. We don't even have an agenda. I what he's asking. I right. I, can, may I speak now? A leg time yes. Well, I see that this is probably an additional item we need to put on the residents' advisory because it, it deal, deals with a lot of uh, resident issues. And the residents' advisory probably is the best place to review these issues and understand and say, okay, these are the issues we consider in the head and, uh, 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 and this is the way we resolve them. Is that the right way we resolve those, those issues? That's not the charter of the well, resident advisory committee. Thank you. I'll okay. second that motion. Motion, which, one, which motion? Your motion that it goes to resident advisory committee. Okay. I second that motion. Okay. Shall we vote on it? Let's vote. vote. That's a, you're talking about future agenda items. Right. You don't vote no. on future, yeah. future uh, agenda. Okay. But again, uh, Andre, we'll make sure that you get a copy of the charter of the resident advisory committee. Yeah. And this type of thing is not in their charter. You, you do have a... Okay, that's what I recommend. Maybe we need to uh, modify that charter. But... It, what it would, the board decides, that's, that's all right with me, okay? And, and the second question, the second question, I don't have my original because I've been, the whole day I've been with uh, 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 the excursion bus. Uh, Laura, do you remember what uh, the other issue that I brought up about uh, uh, manager? Okay, I can't, I don't, I don't have I think the it had to do with the management contract and we will be reviewing the management contract so you can In bring November. that up at that time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's related to the management. Okay, well, I can wait till management mm -hmm. your time. All right, I do have uh, a motion to... Uh, oh, the, it, it was improper. No, to, to disband the oh. uh, disaster task oh, force. That, I thought we did that. We did that. We already did that. Oh, I'm sorry, that. I, I put it in the wrong place. You're right. See, you've got me all confused. <laughs> okay. So the only, future, the only future agenda item I have added then is for closed session, either November and December, is management agreement review. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Is there any other director that has an item they want to put on a future agenda? Seeing none, we'll go to director's comments. And <clears throat> I'll start um, over here with Andre. Manuel. Thank you. Um, I'm very pleased to see that uh, you are uh, considering the uh, change in the uh, requirements as far as windows and all that. I think that is a major improvement. And I hope that in the future we can revisit the standard plan for atrium enclosures because that was working pretty smoothly and effectively and somehow the last year got changed so we now have to go through a variance process. That's the only comment I have to say. I'm glad to see that change made, and I hope we... Are you aware that. of why that change was made? Yes, I do. Okay. I just don't agree with that. All right, fine. <clears throat> Raisa, do you have any comments? No, not that. Not okay, not Gary, that. Don, no. Janie, Maggie, Pat? No. Steve? I would like to encourage anyone watching live or replay or on our YouTube videos to make a recommendation that you go and start using our website. There is a lot of information that's available there and all of our meetings, uh, the board meetings can be seen on YouTube, so I would encourage all our residents to go and utilize that wonderful resource. And I'd like to uh, wish everybody a happy Face Your Fears Day. Happy what? Face Your Fears. Face Your Fears. Face Your Fears. Uh, it's also National Pasta Day, if that's your fear. <laughs> All right, Andre, we'll come back to you. Uh, I think the, the one, one thing we need to do at this point is uh, we know that uh, uh, VMS general managers uh, performance evaluation is coming up so we're looking forward to some reports from the VMS uh, board and uh, providing us some information on that. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we <clears throat> now close this meeting and recess to a closed session and I'll give everybody not quite 10 minutes. <laughs> It'll be in this room. Oh, okay. Uh, we, yeah, they're still using it upstairs for third, so recessed.